Our gospel for this Sunday comes from John the 11th chapter. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and anointed his, and wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill. So the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death, rather it is for God's glory, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were now just trying to stone you. Are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble, because they see the light of the world. But those who walk at night stumble, because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the Twelve, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go so that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been dead in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away. And many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been there, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and, and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him? But some of them said, could not he who have opened the eyes of a blind man kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, it's already, there's a stench because he's been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took the stone away. 
And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me. But I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, his face wrapped in cloth. And Jesus said to them, And bind him and let him go. Many of the Jews Therefore, who had come with Mary, had seen what Jesus did, believed him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what he had done. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. One of the things that we'll hear, and this is kind of a build up as we get ready for that, uh, the Holy Week, the, the last week that Jesus is in Jerusalem, that this is the start of them coming and wanting to put Jesus to death and thinking it's a right thing to do because they're afraid that if he continues to get power and people following him, that the Romans will come in. And so this continues to be what's left after these verses, but... I want to take a turn and go back to what's happening within the midst of this. Uh, we hear of some mourning. And we hear of uh, a thing that was very common with the Jewish faith, that they would actually come and sit with people who, when they had the, they'd have a loved one who died. And this is uh, sitting in Shiva, and it's sitting with the person and being there together in a support of the family. And I don't know about you, but I think I'm in this time of actually looking at this uh, distancing, this physical distancing or social distancing. It's one of those things where we do. We've had two members of our congregation whose husbands have died within this last week. And how do we surround them? This is something that's very common and very understood that this is a good thing for us to do, to be physically with to actually have a fellowship time where we actually have a luncheon prepared for the family, to get around to tell stories, to support one another. So the grief that Mary and Martha is real. It's one that we felt and we continue to feel. And I think this is also one of those things to understand that right now it's okay to name that we're, we're grieving that we are in the midst of a time when, uh, when we are feeling that there's some death upon us. Not necessarily a physical death for everybody, but a change, something that's out of the ordinary for many of us. And so one of the things that we want to do is cling together or find a way to do that. And I think this time, we're challenged by that. But knowing this, this is also exactly where Christ has come to us. Just like with Mary and Martha, he loved Martha and Mary and Lazarus, yet he didn't come when he was sick. He came after he was dead. And this is one of the strange things of, well, of course, Jesus should have gone there. He heard the kind of refrain of this from Martha, Lord, if you'd been here, Lazarus wouldn't have died, our brother wouldn't have died. From Mary, who was at his feet weeping, Lord, if you'd been here, Lazarus, our brother, your friend, would not have died. You heard it, the encore of this coming from the crowd that said, well, couldn't the man who had restored the sight to the blind man save this man's life? And I think this is one of those times when we understand where God is patient with us and comes into the midst of the grief. And we hear within the scripture that God grieves right along with us. That whenever we have this, Jesus weeping wasn't just uh, an act. It was the inward moving of him, the compassion and love that he had for Lazarus, that he has for you and I, that continue to surround us. And so at this time where we actually want so dearly to get together with others, and so dearly are grieving in the midst of this, we can never forget that Christ comes into that. 
Uh, Christ enters into that, and ultimately what God did through Christ in order for that pain and death to be no more. That we are invited into a time to understand that Jesus had talked about the power and the authority that God the Father was giving to his Son in order to actually bring back the dead, raise them to life by actually speaking to them and making them be raised. We hear this again. We hear this in Lazarus, hearing those words ringing within his ears that Jesus is calling his name, ringing within his dead ears. What God is able to do and what Christ has done because Jesus knows ultimately what this is going to cost in order for that to be fully for us. Chapter 12, we hear that unless the grain of wheat is, falls to the earth and is buried, then we will not have a piece of this. That much life will come from it. And so we get thanks that we continue to understand that Jesus' death and resurrection for us comes into a time where it's trying to remove those things, remove those things that are actually trying to separate us from one another and from even our life itself. As we continue to gather together within your homes, taking care of one another, as we continue to gather together, making phone calls, or maybe doing a, a video Bible study Zoom, or just checking in with somebody. Those are ways that we can continue to be that support from one another. And that's what we're called to do. We're free to do that. And that's a very good thing. So as we continue to go through this, we are called to remember that we have been set free according to what God has done for us in Christ Jesus, death and resurrection, that we are those living in a time of uh, physical separation and distancing and the social distancing should only be a matter of actually how do we find new ways to do that and continue to share with one another and actually enter into this time of grief and sadness to actually be okay with that for a little bit, but then also to remember what God has done for us in Christ, bringing us from death to life, is something that God promises for each and every one of us. Promising that his word, his voice, calling to each one of us will be the thing that raises us from the dead. But also that in each and little tiny sufferings that we have, God is also feeling our pain and enters into that time with us. May we continue to know this and can we continue to believe and trust that this is his will, that we continue to be those who trust in his promises, a will not of us going through punishment or, or anything like that, but uh, his will to us for un us to understand that we can be together and that we can be surrounded and uplifted. And we get a foretaste of that as we hear this crazy story, not a story, we hear this crazy gospel, this word of God through Christ, that we are going to be like Lazarus, hearing those words, being able to be comforted. And then once again, when Lazarus has been raised from the dead, to be back in together in communion with one another, to be with his sisters, to be with those who had once mourned and now are rejoicing. May we continue to hold on to Christ the one who grieves and weeps with us, but also the one who has saved and redeemed us. By his name, we give thanks. Amen.